You'll notice how camouflaged these are and it, it just blends in with anything. It doesn't matter what color, these things will blend in. But I want to show you, it's got a little black ring around here, uh, like a rough, and it actually kind of gets, um, they display that a little bit in courtship in spring. So that's where they get their name is a roughed grouse. Another thing that's kind of really neat about these grouse, they've got little built-in snowshoes. You see those little? Oh yeah, look yeah, at that. Yeah, that helps them walk on snow a little bit better. Um, at least that's what biologists believe. And uh, you notice it just, uh, it just blends into invisible. So, look at that. One of my favorite birds. Isn't this just a little perfect little pocket yeah, to see grouse? Yeah, you just right down in here. They've got a little open area to kind of sun themselves and feed up here, but they've got plenty of cover down by the water. Lots of little seeds around here. You can even see some of the little berries along the river. Let's talk about the weapons that you can use. You can use a shotgun, you can use a handgun with bird shot, is that correct? Yeah, as long as it's bird shot. As long as it's bird shot and it has to be um, number six or better. Right. And uh, can you use a bow? I uh, no. Bobo? I don't think you can use a single projectile. You can't for use a rifle. Birds. Yeah, for, for turkeys, I think that's the only exception. Yeah. But for grouse, it has to be bird shot. Mike, let's talk about uh, gun selection for upland game hunting. What do we have here? We've got here from Remington and Browning two very good guns. Uh, first off, let's start with the Remington. This is a 20 gauge. You can get this in 12 or 20 gauge. I really like the 20 gauge for upland hunting. It's, uh, you know, if you're carrying a gun all day long, 20 gauge is a little bit lighter. It's a little bit less recoil for new shooters. Your price on your Remington pumps is a little more reasonable. And so for a good starter gun, that's a great gun. Like I say, you can get it in both gauges. Yep. I also have... And I love the 20. I actually shot a 20. I shoot a 20 on an upland in the uh, uh, Wingmaster version. This is the new Maxxis. This is Browning's lightest gun. It has the least amount of recoil in its class. It is a great gun. It'll shoot the two and three quarters, three inch, and three and a half inch. And, uh, it is a smooth shooting gun. You can take this out upland and then the very next day you can throw some three and a half in here and go bust some geese and uh, you've got a great crossover gun. I can tell you what, this is going home with me right here. They're going to have to fight me for it before I go out the front door. Today we're going to have you licking your TV screen to get at what Jared's cooking. Jared, what do you have going for us? Today we're doing shake and bake grouse today. Uh, we're going to try to keep it as simple and easy as possible. Uh, we have our grouse over here. We got some chopped parsley. And then we have a few different spices. We're going to add oregano leaves, paprika, celery salt, basil, basil leaves, and onion salt, Parmesan cheese. Uh, you can use any type of crackers. We're going to get those all grinded up, put into a bag of, I have here a three-fourths of a cup of flour. Uh, we'll get those all mixed in right now and, and get, our, get our shaking going. So we have Gary, what he's doing right now is he's breaking up those crackers. Uh, what you want to do is finally Get those smashed, crashed, crunched, whatever it's called, as, as thin as possible. Uh, food processor, blender would probably be a little bit better. We're just seeing if Gary can do it right now. What we're trying to do here and accomplish is just kind of make the shake and bake uh, from scratch instead of buying the package. Now what we're going to do is just add, add probably about a table, tablespoon of all of our ingredients, probably two tablespoons of paprika um, to get things going. Then we're going to make sure we get those mixed back up. We're going to take probably about a fourth a cup of uh, shredded Parmesan cheese. We're going to go ahead and mix, mix everything up in the bag. After we get it all mixed and ready to go, we're going to take evaporated milk, pour it inside a little bowl, and then before we put our grouse in there, we're going to, we're going to dip it inside our evapora evaporated milk. And just drop the grouse right inside the mixture. Gary's going to go ahead and mix that one up. We want to make sure that, that the mixture sticks to our grouse. Also, it gives it a little bit different uh, sweetened taste to it with the evaporated milk. We'll go ahead and pull this out. We'll just place it on a cookie sheet, and then it'll be ready for cooking. We'll go ahead and do the rest of these, place them on there. We're going to put them in the oven for about 30 minutes on 375 degrees. We pulled our grouse from the oven. We let it cook for about 25 minutes. We've gone ahead and sliced up a breast, played it with any side dish that you'd like. Now the very best part, we're going to jump in and take a taste and uh, see if we can't find a little BB inside the grouse. Jared, go ahead. That's really good. Simple, fast, fun meal with your fowl. Have a great time. Thanks for watching Cook What You Catch.
throw that on. Because orange is my color. You don't have to wear orange in the field, but uh, this vest has a little orange on it. Just in case you're out hunting with a brother-in-law that uh, you may be a little more worried about. But this vest is from Columbia, and one of the coolest features about this vest is the shell dispenser. They're right there ready to pop out so you can reload after you've taken a few shots. And gravity fed, so the next round will just keep coming until you're out of ammo. It's very cool. Drop your shells in the top. The jacket also sports a lot of pockets. When you're out hunting in the field, you're going to need a few key things to keep you rolling. Survival whistle, and that's got some extra things with it. A thermometer, little compass, windproof lighter, so you can get a fire going. The other pocket there Gary has some fire starters there, because it's not always easy, the easiest thing to find dry wood when you're ready to get a fire going. The other thing that uh, a guy could have if he's going a long ways away from his vehicle is a GPS to keep track of his location. A Gary's secret back pocket here. Find his uh, classic Snickers bar, some beef jerky, and he's also got water bottle pouches on both sides of his vest so he can make sure he stays hydrated as he's out hiking and climbing the hills. Gary collects his birds. He's going to pack them right there. Find Scott. Find some of the other managers that are specialists in these departments. They'll set you up with some killer gear at a killer price in one of the most amazing stores in Utah, Smith & Edwards.